boys, are you all happy to be at Sunday school? I'm happy to be at Sunday school. Let me see your smiling faces. Say cheese! That's not a cheesy smile. That's like a, not a cheesy smile. Let's try that again. Cheese! That's better. I can see some pearly whites, I think. Well, you know what? Let's start off with a happy song. Now, what's a good happy song? Hmm, it's a happy day. No, we've done that one. Uh, rise and shine. Oh, no, we've done that one too. Huh. Elena's got a happy song. Elena, what do you say? Can you say that a little bit louder? Oh, Elena, very good, Elena. Elena wants to see. I've got the joy, joy, joy. Mr. James, do you know how to play? I've got the joy, joy, joy. Very good. Well, get your singing voices on. Stand up, stand up. Come on, let's, let's move around a little bit. Move your head. Move your arms. And ready? I've got the joy, joy, joy. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Way down in my heart. Way down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Way down in my heart to say. Stop! Wait a minute. I can see some of you are doing the actions, I think. Come on, get up. I know, it's morning, come on, jump up. Now I want you to touch the ground, down. Now show me your heart. No, your heart aren't up here, your heart are over here. Better. All right, let's do the thing. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus, down in my heart. Way down in my heart, way down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus, down in my heart. Way down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. Very good. Now, do you think you can do... The long, difficult verse. Oh, it's hard. Let's say it together. It's, I've got the most wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of your heart. Ready? Let's go. I've got the most wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart, I've got the most wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Down in the depths of my heart to stay, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the most wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the most wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Woo! I'm getting a little bit out of breath, are you? That was pretty good singing. I think I can hear you. Well, let's have a word of prayer, shall we? Everybody show me your hands. Put your hands up in the air. Bring them together, bring them down. Close your eyes. Let's talk to Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you, Lord, that all of these children can be here watching Sunday School. I pray that you'll be with them, be with their families, Lord. It's a difficult time. I pray that you'll help them to listen to the lesson and to learn. Please be very close to all of them and keep them and their families safe. In your holy and precious name, I do pray. Amen. Well, you know, there was a song which I was singing this week because I don't know about you, but I haven't been able to see an awful lot of my friends face to face. Which can sometimes be a little bit sad. And I mean, you might miss your friends at school and from church. But you know what? We always have a friend. Jesus says, I will never leave you or forsake you. And there's not a friend like Jesus. So I was thinking we can sing the friend of the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. That song actually came from a man who was quite sad. He lost the person who was going to be his very best friend. Uh, and that happened to him twice. But then he learned, you know what? Jesus is always there. He's always my friend. So let's sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to carry, everything to God in prayer, oh what peace we often forfeit, oh what needless pain we bear, oh because we do not care. Have we trials and temptations? 
your face because at the moment it's like I'm looking at just one eye which I'm not very used to but anyway I hope I can see you all soon today's lesson will be from Psalm 32 so if you could get your Bibles that would be great uh, it's just one verse or we're just re reading one verse it says blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered so we'll just start with a word of prayer and then I'll explain the verse. Dear Lord God, thank you for this day. Thank you that I can give the that I can give the lesson today. I pray that you be with me and with the listeners, and I pray that they'll be able to understand this verse. In your name I pray, Amen. Okay, so there are a couple of words here that you might not know. Blessed means happy, and a transgression is a sin like disobeying or lying. That's a transgression. And then covered, well, if I have a pot and I want to cover it with a the lid, then that's covering it, okay? Now, if we put our easy words into the verse, we have happy is he whose sin is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Now, I'm sure that we all want to be happy, so how do we cover our sin? Okay, so when God sees you right now, he sees you as a sinner. Now, our souls, they're covered in sin, and God can't let the sin into heaven, so we need to cover it. Now, how do we cover our sin? Do we use a blanket? Okay, do we cover ourselves with a blanket? Will that cover our sin? Or do we never go outside in the daytime so that God can't see us? Where even is our sin? Is it, is it like this, this spot of dirt on a jumper? Where even is the sin? See, we, Sin is not an outside blemish. See, humans have three parts. They have the body, the soul, and the spirit. Now, the body is what you can see and you can touch. You can probably see my head and my arms. And you, if you were here, you could be able to touch them. And so, that's your body. And even if you were to cut me open, you could still be able to see my stomach or my lungs. So, even though it's inside my body, it's still my body. And then there's the soul, and the soul is what connects us people on earth to God in heaven. And then there's the spirit, which is like your emotions, like being happy or sad or, or angry or whatever. And sometimes the soul and spirit are used interchangeably. But anyway, this verse is talking about your soul. The sin is on your soul. So how do we cover our sin? Well... We need to cover our sin with Jesus' blood. Now, you might be thinking, hang on, hang on, Mr. James. You just said that the soul cannot be seen or touched or, or even smelt. So how do we cover it with Jesus' blood? Well, well to, give you, 
To make it easier for you to understand, I'll give you a physical illustration, okay? So imagine that you are on a hike to the Blue Mountains after, after a very rainy day and you trip and fall a couple of times and uh, you get very dirty, you have a fun time and then you get home and you sit up for dinner all caked in mud and your mummy says, Girl, you need to be clean before sitting at the table. You're filthy, be clean. But you don't have time to have a shower because then your dinner will go cold. So instead you just go to your room and you put on a long sleeve shirt and some gloves on and then you go back to the table. Do you think your mummy will be happy with that? No, but why not? Your dirt is covered, isn't it? It is covered, but it's still there. The dirt is still there. Now here is a key difference between Jesus' blood as a covering and anything else. You see, when Jesus' blood covers our sin, it not only covers it, but it washes it away. See, with a normal covering, if you just, if I cover my hand up, well then, you know, when I remove the covering, my hand, <gasps> oh, it, it, oh, oh, I feel it's still there. But with a normal covering, you know, my hand is still there. It just covers it. If you see this, if I cover it, it's still there. I'm just covering it. But with Jesus' blood, it not only covers it, but it washes it away. So now you know that our sin must be covered with Jesus' blood. But how, how do we do that? Well, we must repent of our sin and uh, accept the gift of Jesus dying on the cross for our sin. And then our sin will be covered and God can let us into heaven when we die. Of course, now instead of our, our sin being uncovered and God can't let sin into heaven, now our sin, it's as if we have no sin because it's been washed away. And you might be thinking, yeah, that, that, that's cool. Um, I'm not going to worry about that for now. I can, I can worry about that when I'm older. I'm not going to think about God and that sort of thing. You know, I'm still, I'm still very young. But there are a couple of problems with this. I remember sometimes when I, when I go to a funeral, and then I go to a cemetery afterwards, and then I look at the headstones, and sometimes I read the headstones, and some people don't live very long. Some people live 30 or 40 or 20 or even 10. I think the youngest I've seen is four. So you, you don't know when you're going to die. So just presuming that you're going to live longer, well, you, you probably will. You'll probably live for years and years. But you don't, you're not certain of that. James 4.14 says that life is a vapour that appears, that appears for a little time and then vanisheth away. If you've ever seen a kettle boil, maybe you make a tea or make a tea for your parents, you boil the kettle and then the water gets hotter and hotter and then the water vapour goes up and up and up and then the water boils and the water vapour is gone. It's gone. And that's like our life. It doesn't last very long. And then the second problem with just, with just forgetting about um, covering your sin for now is that the longer you reject Jesus, the harder your heart will become. I remember when um, we were setting up some poles for a shade sail over a swimming pool, so that there's shade over the swimming pool. Uh, we put some poles in and we dug a big, big hole and then put in some, we mixed up some concrete and then put the hole with the pole in the hole. And then, and then we wait for the concrete to set. Now, if we need to move the pole while the concrete's still wet, it's easy. But the concrete, it dries. So if we waited a day, then it would be too late. And our hearts are like the concrete. And the longer we wait to accept Jesus, the harder and harder our hearts will get. And soon, if we wait, well, till the end of our lives, well, our hearts will only be hard. And we probably won't accept Jesus as our Saviour then. So it's important that, it's important that you accept Jesus now and not think, ah, I'll just think about it later. Anyway, so now, we know that we have a dirty soul and God cannot let a dirty soul into heaven 
because it's covered in sin. So it must be covered with the blood of Jesus. In order to cover our sin with the blood of Jesus, we must repent of our sin and accept Jesus as our saviour from the sin. And then we can be like this happy man his, his transgression is forgiven and his sin is covered. Thank you for listening and I think we now have some more songs or a craft or something like that. Thank you very much Mr James, that was a wonderful lesson. That was a very good lesson and it makes me think of the song What Can Wash Away My Sin? Just like Mr James says, you can't just cover your sin with a blanket. That won't take it away, but the blood of Jesus Christ will take it away. So let's sing, what can wash away my sin? Can you tell me what can wash away my sin? That's right, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that's a wonderful thing for us to remember. Well, I think that we all have a very special craft now. So get your glue and grab your scissors. And we're going to have a craft from a wise old wise man. Hmm, a wise old wise man. Let's see. Are you ready? Oh, here he comes. Hello there, everyone. How are you? Well, listening to that message, it made me feel very, very wise. So wise, I grew this big, long, white, fluffy beard on my face. Do you like it? He just tricking. That is going to be our craft activity for this uh, week. So you guys can see I have this fluffy beard on my face. Now, the way it works, let me just take this off one second. Oh. Ah. So you have... The beard. Now I'm going to send your mum and your dad a template, a little cutout thing that you guys can do. And what I did is I cut it out very carefully with a pair of scissors. I put glue all over it. I glued the cotton balls on and then you guys can see at the back, I used a bit of elastic to tie it together. And when it's all tied together, it makes a perfect wise beard. Let me show you. Ready? A wise, wise beard indeed, okay? Now you guys have fun making that craft. I'm going to pass it over to Mr. Hayden. He's going to do a memory verse with you guys. Remember, memory makes you wise. <laughs> well, good morning, boys and girls. I hope you enjoy that craft. Today we are going to learn the verse. The lesson is he. I thought it said, blessed was the man whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. But it actually says, he. So, silly me, eh? So, but we're going to go figure out some words. So I've already given you all the answers, but maybe you've forgotten them. Okay. So it says, blessed is he. Now, he is implied. And I'm quite sure that he can also mean boys and girls. So we're going to draw a picture. Okay? It's not only boys and girls who are blessed when their sins are forgiven, but girls as well. There. Of course she has no neck. But anyway. And we'll put it in parentheses. Okay? Oh yes, and pair. Thank you, Mrs. Haddad. Smiley face. Okay, so blessed is he, but I'm sure boys and girls as well, whose, do you remember the word? T transgression. And that's a big tricky word, so I'm going to explain it a bit. First of all, 
See? Trans. What does that mean? That means to go across. See? So I'm going to draw an arrow. Going all the way across. So we have transatlantic, which means to go across the Atlantic Ocean. Or we've got um, transportation. So we are transported in a boom boom car, or in a boat, it means they go somewhere else. And we have transgression. So what does gression mean? Does anyone know what gression means? I didn't think so. It means to step. It means to take a big step. Okay, now we take steps because we're people. So I'm going to draw a person here. Okay, and see this man's foot? He's going to take a big step across. Now there's two places because you have to go from A to B. Let's draw a line down the middle. And in this context, we obey God. Obey God or disobey God. So if we obey God, we're not sinning. If we disobey God, then... We're sinning, aren't we? And we're stepping across from being good and being happy with God to disobeying God, and God doesn't like that. And so that's also called sin. See, so when we transgress, we step across from being right with God to being not right with God. So that's what transgression means. It means to go across from good to evil. And so when we do that, blessed is the man who's Transgression is forgiven. Now you already know what, trans, what forgiven means. So it means to forgive. So when our sin is forgiven, well then we're blessed and happy. Who's sin? Now you know what sin is already. It's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? See? It's when we go from good to evil against God. So look at it. It says pretty much the same thing, doesn't it? Let's just draw a big box around this all, see? It says the same thing twice, doesn't it? It must be very important. And we can know for sure that blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Because when we die, and we go before God, God sees our sin, or he sees us and he says, well, do you have sin there? Well, if it's been covered by the blood of Christ, if it's washed away, well, then I'm sure you'll be a very blessed and happy man in heaven and also on earth. So let's say that a few times, shall we? Now that you know what it means, we better be pretty quick. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Covered. Psalm 32, 1. Okay, can we say that again? Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Okay, I hope you, you remember it. Thank you, Mr. Hayden. Well, that brings us to our last song, which is, can you guess what we're going to do? Jesus covers our sins, and when he covers our sins, he also takes them away. So let's do, Jesus took my burden, and he rolled it in the sea, never to remember anymore. And how does that make us? Blessed or happy. Ready, Mr. James? Jesus took my burden and rolled it in the sea, rolled it in the sea, rolled it in the sea. Jesus took my burden and rolled it in the sea, never to remember anymore. Show me your faces. Now I am happy, happy, happy as can be. Happy, happy as can be. Happy, happy as can be. Happy, happy as can be, never to remember anymore. I think you can sound a little bit happier. Come on, jump up. Ready? 
Show me your rolling hands and show me your smiley faces. One, two, three. Jesus took my burden and rolled it in the sea. Roll it in the sea. Roll it in the sea. Jesus took my burden and rolled it in the sea. Never to remember anymore. Now I am happy, happy, happy as can be. Happy as can be. Happy as can be. Now I am happy, happy as can be. Never to remember anymore. Well done, everybody. Well, let's get ready for our. Oh, here comes our puppets. La I like to clean the house. I like to clean the house. La 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 la. I like to clean the house. Oh, hello, Winkles. What are you doing, Owl? I'm spring cleaning. Oh. For spring. Can I help you? Oh, sure. La 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 Oh, just about done. Oh, Winkles, all we need is, can you go get a clean green bin and hang it right over there? Sure thing. La 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 Oh, ah, that's wonderful. Here, it's clean and it's green and it smells like <sighs> lavender. Oh, lovely, Winkles, lovely. <sighs> well, that was pretty good spring cleaning work, I reckon. Mm -hmm. Let's go celebrate and take a break. Good idea. I don't feel good very, not very well at all. I ate too much ice cream and too many chips. My poor tummy tum tum. Ah, oh, that feels much better. Time to go eat some more ice cream. Yes, if I go in the woods today, I'll find some more ice cream. Oh, there's nothing like the a lovely, fresh, clean smell of spring. Oh, yes. Ooh, something surely does stink. Oh, it does. I don't get it. We clean so beautifully. It's coming from the clean green bin. The clean green bin? Icky! Yuck! Oh, it is too. I... I think there's some garbage in it. What shall we do? Well, it's a pretty new bag. I know! Let's cover it! It still smells bad. Let's cover it some more. Okay, let's cover it some more. And uh, here I've got another one. Here it comes. Uh, whoo, uh, Oh, it still smells bad. I know. Uh, wait, I'll get something else. Uh, um, what shall I? That's even worse. <coughs> Happy spring, young animals. <coughs> that doesn't smell like spring. We, we clean so beautifully. We 
sorry I even put a fish near plain green dinner. <coughs> Are you sure? Well, I think the problem is the clean green bin that smells a bit funny. We tried covering it, but it don't go nowhere. Covering it? How do you try to fix the smell by covering it? Right. Well, we grab some things to put on top of it and... Uh... We sprayed sweet smelling spray all over it. <sighs> Nothing worked. Oh, you young and foolish hearted animals. Listen unto counsel and hear discretion. Here is a lesson of life to be learned. You cannot co cover garbage with spray, just like you cannot cover your sin with good works. It will only smell worse. The only way for the house to be clean is to have the garbage taken away from it. In the same way, the only way your life to be cleaned is for Jesus to take away your sin. I get it. I get it. We should have taken the garbage out of the house. Yes. Exactly, young wrinkles. <gasps> Even more important is to have the sin taken out of our lives. Unlike the garbage bag, sin is something we do not have power to take away ourselves. Only Jesus can do that. I, I carried it away and it sure smells much better. For you. Thanks for the life lesson, Wombat. We'll have to remember that. Indeed, dead flies maketh the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savour. Mm -hmm. Now let's go celebrate your hard work of spring cleaning with some lemonade. 